So this is a simple problem of traffic assignment. We have two routes given between an origin and destination and both of routes' uh, link performance functions are known. And based on that, you're supposed to determine how much of the traffic flow, the total demand traffic flow between the origin destination pair will go to which route. The first part of the problem asks for if the demand is $15,000 vehicle. I uh, beg, beg your pardon, 15,000 vehicles per hour. And what happens if demand is only 1,000 vehicles per hour? As I've told you, the first thing that you want to do in traffic assignment problem is try to look for how many of these routes are actually going to be used at a given demand flow. The best way to do that is establish a threshold where all routes become competitive. So that's what we're going to end up doing here. The other thing to note in this problem is that the demand flow X's are expressed in terms of thousands of vehicles per hour and the time travel times are represented in minutes. So here is the two travel times. So let me draw the problem out. You have the origin, you have the destination, and you have two routes. And both of these routes have these equations for the travel time functions or the link performance functions. So under this scenario, the question is, how do you determine which route is at the risk of not being used? The answer to that question is easy. You look for the fact that if both roads were empty, which route would you take? I'm inclined to take route 2 because if both routes were empty, that means x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 0. And under that scenario, route 1 will take 4 minutes to the destination versus route 2, which only will take 2.2 minutes. So under that scenario, route 1 is at the risk of not being used. The question then is, at what demand level route 1 becomes competitive? The route 1 becomes, the first route becomes competitive at the point where 2.2 plus 6x2 becomes, the travel time on route 2 becomes so high that it exceeds or becomes equal to 4 units or 4 minutes of travel time. So under this scenario, 2.2 plus 6x2 equals 4. And you can solve this for x2 and you will get 0 0.3 uh, for x2. And because this is in thousands of vehicles per hour, I can say this is 300 VPH. So anytime the demand exceeds 300 VPH, that means both routes are going to be used. Anytime the demand is less than 300 vehicles per hour, what would happen? The problem for you will become rather simple because you can say at less than 300 vehicles per hour, everybody will just take route two and the demand on route one will be zero. So let's come back to the problem here. The demand that we're given is 15,000 vehicles per hour and even on the second part, the demand is only 1,000 vehicles per hour. So how do you solve for that? Now, we know the user equilibrium principle now, if we know both routes are going to be used, as is the case in this scenario. So we know that x1 plus x2 should be equal to 15, because 15,000 vehicles per hour. And that gives me my one equation. And if I want to get a second equation, because I have two unknowns, x1 and x2, I'll try to get a second equation. And that will come from the user equilibrium principle. Let's see if we can go ahead and solve this problem. So look at the second. Uh, so first equation is easy because I can just say from the flow conservation of flow principles that x1 and x2 should be equal to 15. Now make make a note here, you don't want to make it 15,000. Let me clear that up a little bit. Make sure that you note that this should not be 15,000 because my x's are expressed in thousands of vehicles per hour. So that's why I'm just putting in 15 and not 15,000. But since I have two unknowns, I need two equations. Where does my second equation come from? That comes from the user equilibrium principles that the travel time at the equilibrium on all used route has to be equal. And we have determined that both routes are going to be used. So my second equation comes from 4 plus 
3x1 equal to 2.2 plus 6x2. And if I were to solve this now, I have two equations and two unknowns and I can solve for x1 and x2. And I would leave the solution to you. I'll provide you with the answers uh, with the homework solution sheet. What happens when the question is if the demand between OD pairs is only 1000? Let's try to get that set up. So instead of 15 now, I'm going to say x1 plus x2 equal to 1. And my second equation will still remain the same because I still want to equate the travel time on, on both of those routes. So 4 plus 3x1 should still be equal to 2.2 plus 6x2. Again, two equations and two unknown, and I should be able to solve that equation for x1 and x2. The question is, what if think about it sort of a question what happens if the demand was only 100 vehicles per hour what happens if the demand was only 100 vehicles per hour instead of this 1000 now your first inclination might be to look at your first inclination might be to look at and say x1 plus x2 equal to point 0.1 and set up the second equation 4 plus 3x1 equal to 2.2 plus 6x2. However, that would be incorrect because at 100 vehicles per hour, you would not have both routes being used because we determined that the threshold for both routes being used was 300 vehicles per hour. So in, in this scenario, that particular equation setup would be incorrect because the demand is less than the threshold. So you first always have to check for that threshold that we did in the first uh, part of this problem, and that was 300 vehicles per hour. Right, hope that helps you, and I hope you're able to solve the homework problem that might have a little twist on it, and I will see you next time.